guys, welcome in. Today we're gonna do a little uh, casual get ready with me type video, trying out some new-ish products. Um, one thing that's very new to me that will probably be sort of like the star of the show of this video is the new It Girl palette from Ulta. So this is from It Cosmetics and I think it's the volume three. And it's like one of those real multitasking all-in-one type things. Now they have released another one of those big fold out like multi-panel beauty books um, through QVC, which I pre-ordered this past week. So that'll be another thing we focus on in the near future as well. But that's not here yet. So this is item number one on the agenda. Um, and I've also got a few new different things here and there that I got from Sephora recently. So we're just gonna throw it all in. And just to give you a small backstory of where I'm at in life as I shoot this right now, it is Saturday, it is the 12th of October. Yesterday, I went in for a doctor's appointment and the body's making a little progress, I guess, toward baby time. I say a little. I'm not sure how fast things could ramp up, but I'm 60% effaced, which I was at the appointment before that, the week prior. But now um, the difference is that I'm a centimeter dilated. And he also mentioned that I lost the mucus plug, which was a big topic for conversation I chose to bring up on Twitter and Instagram last night, asking like, how soon after you hear that do you go ahead and give birth? For me, it wasn't something I noticed like, oh, lost the mucus plug like a big event or something. He just seemed to be aware that it was no longer present. Um, and I don't recall seeing it in one fell swoop. And I guess that's common. It could just like gradually leave without you really noticing. So that's where we're at. Um, I made it through the night pretty normally last night and I have not felt any contractions yet. So I thought, let's just go ahead. Well, we still have another morning here for sure. And I'll shoot a video. Okay, baby, that sound good to you? Here's the foundation I'm gonna be using. It's the Smashbox Studio Skin full coverage 24 hour foundation. So this stuff sounds pretty heavy duty and I used it yesterday for the first time and I squeezed out what I thought was a really like normal amount of product but it turned out to be way too much. This appears to be very potent. I'm the shade 2.15 and it's under skin tone light, undertone cool and it seems absolutely perfect just as far as the tone goes. So okay I'm gonna watch myself really carefully here with this little squeeze tube and I'm gonna do about half of what I did yesterday. So if yesterday was a large pearl sized amount, this is the size of like one of the teeny tiny peas out of the pod, you know, like the, the little baby ones. I mean, I just feel like this stuff is uh, really, really potent. It almost reminds me of like the Estee Lauder Double Wear Maximum cover a little bit. And then I'm gonna blend it in with my beauty blender and just see for yourself, like it covers a lot. See how perfect that tone is just going right back into my skin really, really nicely. But the areas where it looked heavy, even right after application yesterday, were really around the nose. It just seemed pretty obvious, you know, even though I felt like I really worked to blend it in. It was just kind of that feeling I get when I'm like, well, I put on too much foundation. So I'm not really blaming the product, but I didn't realize <laughs> what I was getting into. Maybe I just need to wear a makeup headband during labor. I mean, I feel so in control. I feel so like the hair's not bugging me at all right now. There are other headbands in the world, you know, Em. It's looking a little thick around that inner eye area for some reason, but that's looking more reasonable around the nose. But I still feel like the coverage is pretty extreme everywhere else. Like, I mean, really full. It did last really nicely on me though. Even though you know, I had those thicker looking areas, it started to look a little thick even on my forehead yesterday. Um, it was definitely still there very much. Next for concealer, we're gonna go for something fairly new. I'm gonna use my Revolution Conceal and Hydrate in C4. And we'll just put a little bit of this around the eye area, a little bit right out here. This shade is so good because it's just a little brighter than my skin tone, but not too light. And I am going to try to implement that strategy where you let it sit just a little bit. I'm just gonna, you know, enjoy some coffee, chat with y'all. So how about those St. Louis Cardinals? They did not win last night, their first game against Washington, but that was quite a game against the Braves, wasn't it? I think Cardinals fans were sitting there like, what the heck, what got into them? Wow. So we're gonna do a little blending now. I'll just um, keep going with the beauty blender with this. Oh, I meant to tell you guys, I ordered a new beauty blender because I just, I feel like it's time. 
Time for a new one in my life. And why just order a beauty blender when you can get the Jewel Box Mystery Blind Bag here? So I guess this should contain a beauty blender and something else. It just seems so much more fun and festive than just going the normal route. But I think in other holiday kits, they have beauty blenders in a number of different colors, so maybe it's just a color thing. That concealer covers so nicely and it adds a little hydration, which I really like. Okay, so let's open this up. Let's see what kind of thing we're working with here. We have a, a solid cleanser that looks like a little gym. Smells nice, smells soapy. <laughs> and a pink beauty blender. Man, it seems so bright. Like, look. <laughs> Is that on another level bright? Wow. Sure does make my other one look dingy. That's cool. That's a neat little thing. It's 20 bucks, by the way, at Sephora. And then you can just make it be a lovely ornament on the tree. I'm not even ready to start talking about trees yet. I do want to set my face a little bit. I mean, I, I've got this voice in the back of my mind saying, what if it's baby day? You know, go there. Give yourself some staying power, girlfriend. So I've got out my Laura Mercier um, translucent pressed powder, which I love and I have been reaching for quite a bit just for the quick set. I know it never looks like too much on the under eye, but I like it on the T-zone too. But what I did learn about this foundation is like, don't go overboard powdering it. You know, it's very matte, it's very full coverage. I just kind of set like any sweat prone areas, you know, and that really does seem to help. Now we're going to go into the It Girl palette because we do have several different face steps here, blush, bronzer, and highlighter. I'll, um, I think, start with the bronzer here. It's in a shade called Beach. A little tap in. My brush seemed to pick up a lot, so watch out. Well, I didn't go to my forehead first like usual. Hmm. Get a little up here. Yeah, I think you can sort of see that this is a nicely pigmented bronzer where you really don't need to scrub into the product at all. I'm trying to tell what kind of finish this bronzer has. It seems like it's almost... Yeah, it's a definite satin finish bronzer. It's got just a little glow to it. I'm taking a little even on the tops of the cheeks and just letting it be a true bronzer. Okay, the blush here is called Sweet Cheeks, and it has that, like, It Girl imprint right here, and it looks like a really sort of rich peach with a goldeny shimmer. So we're gonna pick some of that up with the e.l.f. blush brush. Picks up also really nicely. That's a nice shade, nice, fresh, wearable, peachy glow. And I am picking up on the little sheen that it has too. That's really nice. From here on out, it's really gonna be this palette except for like my lip color, I guess, basically. And like mascara, because we do even have the little brow power powder in here. And you know what I have totally kept doing is taking my blush like up to my forehead and across my nose and to my chin, just like my viewer tip. That is so radiant and pretty, I love it. And next we have our highlight over here, and this is in the shade called Radiance, oops. And it looks like it's leaning just a little bit goldeny, like a golden champagne-y kind of color. Um, but it doesn't look off the charts shimmery. Let's see how it applies. Oh, it can go there. <laughs> it's like, okay, I'll show you. That's really pretty. And something I was realizing the other day, especially with that Smashbox foundation, like you gotta try to go there with some highlight once you get this full coverage, really, really matte foundation on your skin. I think a nice glowy highlight makes a lot of difference. You just need it. And then I've really been trying to be conscious about taking my highlight like up to the forehead and kind of hitting this area right above the arch of the brow. It only makes sense that if you're going to have a little glow on your skin, you know, it should sort of glow everywhere in the key places, you know what I'm saying. And then a little bit on the cupid's bow. That's lovely. I really, I must say these face steps have been nice in this palette. Nicely pigmented, not feeling like I've got to use a ton of product to get the desired effect, so that's cool. And then, oh, for setting spray, I got the Urban Decay All Nighter Honey setting spray. I really wanted to try this. It just comes in a mini. Um, they're really working in some of the honey products into holiday type sets, basically. Like, you can get a mini honey palette. They've got some kind of lip gloss or lip plumper, but I wanted to try the all-nighter setting spray in the honey scent and I used it yesterday and I'm like is this supposed to smell like honey or is it just like a beautiful look because I can't really pick up on much but let's try it again I can tell that there's something a little different about the smell I have no idea that it's honey 
I guess my advice would be if you're looking for a profoundly honey scented setting spray, this, this isn't really going there for me. They always double cap you here. They're like, you're not going to spill this stuff. I need a little lip balm here. My lips are feeling dry. I'm going to use my pineapple. That was needed. My lips have been so dry. I've had this cold for, I guess, about a week now, but it's really fading fast. Like, I'm kicking this cold's butt. I've just been hydrating, hydrating, hydrating. Now we're going to try the Brow Power Universal Taupe Powder here. So this is definitely like an individual product that's sold on its own. I think Sweet Cheeks Blush is too. But anyway, I've got this Angled Real Techniques brush. This is the definer brush. It came from a eye set. So I'm going to dip into that brow power powder. And then I'm just going to fill in my brows and then I'll probably set it with my Alme. But I'll use this to try to see. You can really get some color from this, even though it looks like this light taupe powder. I get the universal claim because my brows are dark, but it's one of those buildable ideas, right? And it really does make a palette more versatile to, to give you a brow thing in there. I believe there's a brow power shade in their bigger um, QVC beauty book as well. I'll have to link to that below where I found it. Like I said, I just, um, they called it pre-order. I have to double check when that's going to ship out to me, but it looks pretty cool. That's just like one of those products that I'm fully committed to trying every year. Okay, what do we think of the brow? I mean, it's nice and soft, right? I don't feel like it's too lightened compared to my normal brow, but maybe just a little softer looking. I would say it's definitely a fantastic beginner way to start filling in your brows. If you've never done anything to your brows, a brow powder, specifically one like this that is so forgiving and so like universally workable, would be a great place to practice. Heck of a lot easier than jumping right into a brow pencil or a pomade or a brow ink or whatever format you want, you're thinking about. But powder was where it all started for me. I just used a matte brown um, L'Oreal eyeshadow single for the longest time. It was a little darker than this and I used that thing till the compact broke and even beyond I held it together with a um, little rubber band. <laughs> Those were the days. The days before there were like 10,000 brow products and also the days before you had hundreds if not thousands of YouTubers telling you what brow products you needed to be trying. Simpler times but I love my YouTube. All right I'm gonna cool it for now on that. I feel like they're looking pretty good at least from my vantage point here. I grabbed my Alme gel out of my little hospital bag. So that's all packed and waiting. I feel prepared in terms of what I'm going to take. You know, I've done the videos on it. I'm ready. So with this, it's just this really skinny wand, um, like tinted gel. I feel like this just finishes off the brows nicely. There's literally like no hold in just a powder that you're going to put on your eyebrows. One way to, I think, even in further intensify the effect, though, of that IT Cosmetics powder would be to take a little wax pencil through your brows first. Then I think you get even more color intensity out of it, but also just more cling. And like that would ultimately give your brows some hold. I know wet Wild makes one, Milani makes one, and they're just little like clear jumbo pencil looking sticks and you can just draw them right over top of your brows and then go in just like I did with an angled brush and that powder. Now the only thing left to try in this palette are the eyeshadows. There are six of them. I'm going to use my Milani eyeshadow primer here real quick to get us ready. And these shadows, I don't know y'all, they look really light. Like I'm wondering if there's going to be enough contrast to make much of a look at all. I don't know. This is what I'm talking about here. Look at these shadows, gang. I mean, we've got a matte up here. I'm going to see how that works in the crease. Um, the top two are matte, so you've got a matte, like, kind of taupe that's not too far off from the brow shade, and then this cream. Granted, you could use any of this stuff as eyeshadow, really, but I just really want to see how the eyeshadows that they gave us are going to perform. Now, this shade called Magic down in the bottom, that seems a little deeper than I thought it was going to be. Interesting. Shimmery gray. Okay. So first, let's see how much intensity we get out of Inspire right here. Can that really define the crease? Very lightly it can. <laughs> you know, sometimes shades like that, they look one way in their pan, but they end up somehow seeming a little deeper in application. This one seems kind of true to the way it looks in the pan, just pretty light. I think it could have gone a little darker there, right? 
very, very subtle. I'm kind of tempted to dip into brow power down here, even though I know this is probably a little different formula and maybe a powder that might, I don't know, even cling in a little bit more. It's not necessarily a bad thing. I'm gonna add a little bit of that to my crease. Why not? See, adds a little, little extra depth. Let's see what this um, shade called Magic is all about because it may potentially be our deepest thing, but the shimmer is just sort of fooling us a little. Like I'm gonna dab this on the outer part of the lid. Yeah, I don't even know if I can really call it deep though. You know, it's just like a mid-tone at best. Work it up into the crease slightly. It's pretty and it's pigmented. This is all about the decisions that were made for what to put in the palette because I generally think like it, it cosmetic shadows tend to be really soft, easy to work with, easy to blend. So that's not the problem. Uh, maybe blend over my crease a little bit with the crease brush. Well, one thing's for sure, it's not a warmy McWarmerson palette like many tend to be. So if you don't like warm shades, can I just really say warmy McWarmerson? We've also got this color called Gleam here that's really interesting. It's like silver gold mixture almost. More toward the silver side, I'd say. Let's, I don't know, pop a little bit of that in here. Again, nothing really deep about that shade either. Um, and then let's use this color called Shine on our inner corner. It looks sort of silvery. See how it applies? Got to build it a little bit. It's not looking wildly metallic, which may be good news for some, but I'm feeling like snowflakes falling around my eyes, so it's a little more flaky than some of those other shimmers. It's like I kind of had the face look how I wanted it. Thank you very much, eyeshadow. We're going to have ended up using darn near everything here, except I guess we haven't used this matte cream, but we all kind of know what that's capable of. I'm going to use this color called Glowing, which looks like a super soft rose gold and maybe just dust that above here as a bit of a highlight. The only other thing I can really think to do to try to see if we can make it any more dramatic might be to go into Magic with a little bit smaller brush. Kind of just see if we take that to the outer corner, if that adds anything. And it does kind of start to come alive a little bit. Just barely, but it's it's there. And again, it's not a lack of pigmentation thing. Like that shade swatches beautifully and I think it lays down nice on the lid. They've chosen some shades here that are only gonna get so dark. I mean, maybe this overall is a really good beginner palette. Maybe that's the ultimate purpose here. That's the big takeaway. Because honestly, if I was just starting out with makeup or I knew somebody who was, I would say, you know, Stay away from maybe the deepest, darkest things for a bit as you just start to get comfortable with things, right? So this is just a bare brush. I'm kind of just blending over the edge. Okay, I got a little added depth. And then maybe I'll take a pencil brush, again with magic, and just give ourselves a little definition. But additionally, even if you're not a beginner, some people just prefer like the lighter eye look and that's kind of what this is. I wanna give it one more shot with shine and just use my finger just for a moment here. A little less flake to that and a little more lay down if you use your finger, FYI. So there is our eye look. Um, I think I'm just gonna finish that off with some mascara. Actually, I want some brightness as well. I want my Wet n Wild Ultimate Brow Highlight. Pulling all my things back out of my hospital makeup bag. I do appreciate having the mirror in here. You know, I think it's a pretty good use of space inside the palette. As far as what they've been able to include and the size of the pans for the face stuff. If you like the multitasking nature of it, um, but you just want maybe the ability to go deeper and more dramatic on the eye. Um, there's a little something called the Needs Palette out by this girl named Emily. She like worked with a brand and uh, made it like their greatest hits of the brand palette. And so that's something maybe you could look into. That'll supply you with a nice little eye look. But no, that superhero mascara though, my goodness. I, I just find myself appreciating it with every application. This is kind of a little ethereal, like light angelic kind of makeup look. You know, we've got really good skin. The foundation really tackled that well. I think the face steps in this palette were absolutely gorgeous. The eyeshadows kept us in this very light place, but in a way it's just kind of beautiful. Very like soft and feminine kind of makeup, I guess. 
You know what I got lost in watching last night um, on YouTube? Something was recommended to me. It was like, what is this called? Just a second, you need to know. It was super entertaining. Oh, Song Association. And it's Elle's, Elle Magazine's like YouTube channel that does it. And they have a different celebrity on. Like the first one that I caught was Adam Lambert. And they throw out a word and that person has to sing a song that includes that word like just right off the top of their head. And it's so fun to watch. I'm gonna keep the lower lash line bare just for like added brightness and just not having to worry about any mascara smudging down there at all. For the lips, I want to go to this new bite set. So this is my first time like kind of popping this open. Um, I was wondering if bite was even going to come out with anything this year. And then several of you caught me on Twitter and you're like, bite has something now. So they have little mini lipstick tubes here and they've made them each like the color of the actual lipstick. And they say creamy color, four piece, mini Amuse Bouche Supercharged Lipstick Set. I just want to go with like a really soft color today. I'll definitely do some kind of try on. I've got another mini lipstick set from Charlotte Tilbury. Maybe I'll sort of incorporate it, make it a little twofer type video. But this shade looks really natural, kind of your lips a bit better. It's called Good Jujube. <laughs> That's kind of pretty, kind of warm. This one's got a little more pink in it. It's called Ruby Bonbon. I kind of want like this really light, pinky, but sort of blotted lip look. So I may go all over the lips at this, which is a pretty color. Oh, so smooth. Plus I've got a balm on, so it's really gliding today. And here's what's up. Just to keep it nice and soft, I'm gonna literally blot it. Just so I've got this pretty like flush of color. And then I'm gonna do that trick where you get some on your fingers, and then as a finishing touch, it becomes your blush. I think this may become like a big move for me every time. <laughs> I love that tip from last week's video. Just a little something extra. So yes, guys, Bite does have a set of minis. More to come on that, I promise you, very soon. So here's our finished look. I mean, I really think the main players today were the foundation and the palette. You know, this was a lot of coverage. I felt like using less than I did the day before was definitely the way to go. Um, I maybe could have used a hint more, but it just kind of takes some trial and error to see what do I need to get all over my face, but yet it's a fine line, I think, with a product this full coverage and this matte um, as far as going too far and looking too heavy. But I think it looked really beautiful. It paired nicely with that uh, Revolution Conceal and Hydrate Concealer. This Honey Spray, beware. I mean, it doesn't really smell that much like honey to me. Feel free to debate me on that in the comments section, but I just, I don't really see it. And then this It Girl Palette, the Volume 3. To me, my takeaway here is that I think this is a great beginner's product. It, I say that because I feel like none of the shadows go too dark at all. I feel like we achieved maximum darkness and it still looks pretty darn light, doesn't it? But it gives you a sampling of everything. I think the face products are so nice. The brow product, yet another super beginner friendly way to go as far as brows. You get the big mirror in there. I think many of us have someone in mind who might benefit from a little like starter kit Kit that's still made up of really good quality products, but that person's gonna feel, I think, very safe in this color scheme. But if you're looking for a dark night out smoky eye, I mean, this palette is not that, so keep that in mind. Again, more to come when I get their It Girl, like actual beauty book that they do for QVC. I will totally be talking about that too. And I expect that will have more of an eyeshadow range. I believe it also includes some concealers and lip colors like years past. So yeah, we're going to definitely focus in on that too. So thank you guys so much for watching. I'll keep you updated on any baby news on social media and I will see you again very soon. Bye.